there are three components to be considered in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The New King James renders them as good for food, pleasant to the eyes, and make one wise. These three components are defined in 1 John 2:15 through 17, where good for food equates to the lust or strong desires of the flesh and pleasant to the eyes equates to the lust of the eyes, both corrupted whenever the third element of make one wise or the pride of life is present. Make one wise correlates with the serpent's statement, you will be like God. The NIV renders pride of life as the boasting of what he has and does. This is much more descriptive and accurate. John is clear, stating that these three things sum up the world and everything in it. He also states that if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him, emphasizing this point by declaring that these three components are not of the Father, but of the world. As mentioned in other studies, the tree of knowledge and tree of life are the same tree, but presented separately to illustrate our spiritual transition and to establish the difference between good and life. I heard it said long ago that something can be good, but not necessarily life. I believe this is true. Now, let me remind you that the tree of knowledge is symbolic of the law of God, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. However, let me make this distinction. Not only does the tree of knowledge reflect the law of God, but it also reflects the old covenant out of which it evolved. Why is this important? Because a covenant is a formal, solemn, and binding agreement or promise, often under seal, between two or more parties. The most important thing to realize about the covenants, old and new, is that they were initiated by God to man and not the other way around. If the tree of knowledge represents the law, the roots of this tree represent the covenants, that which binds the Creator with His creation. No wonder John the Baptist told the Pharisees, even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil, followed by the tree of life, so what separates good from life? It's evil, synonymous with darkness, dying, and death. A seed must fall into the ground and die or it remains alone. And what is death? The entrance of pride which leads to lawless or unrighteous behavior. So what would life be? The absence of pride and thus righteous behavior. It's good when we're innocent, but far better when we have been tested and purified like gold and stand righteous before the Lord and man. So how is it that the tree of knowledge and tree of life are the same? In both, we find the law of God, but the difference between them is that the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Note how Paul states the following. Owe no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. The old covenant presents the law externally, while the new covenant writes it into our hearts. In this way, Christ did not do away with the law, but fulfilled it. Yes, he did away with the outward external ordinances that are but types and shadows of the reality, but he did not do away with its divine essence, which is love. No wonder John wrote the following. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Now let me share the following illustration with you, which I hope helps clarify my point. Note in this illustration that the law is central to our movement from left to right. As we progress, we encounter the message of the cross or self-sacrifice in the middle. It's inevitable. So before we can reach the right side or right hand of the power of God, 
We must be lifted up by the Spirit of God to experience the unconditional love of the Father and Son. In keeping with this illustration, consider the following. For we know that the law is spiritual. Now, with all this being said, how can good be bad? Let me show you in the following from Matthew 23. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. So practice and observe whatever they tell you, but not what they do. For they preach, but do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on people's shoulders. But they themselves are not willing to move them with their finger. They do all their deeds to be seen by others. For they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long, and they love the place of honor at feasts and the best seats in the synagogues and greetings in the marketplaces and being called rabbi by others. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher and you are all brothers. And call no man your father on earth, for you have one father who is in heaven. Neither be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Christ. The greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. What makes our good bad? The same thing that corrupts any of our desires. Pride, the excessive love of self. Read Matthew 6, verses 2, 5, and 16 as well as 1 Corinthians 13 verses 1 through 9 for further understanding. I find it interesting that Jesus also stated the following. Woe to you when all people speak well of you, for so their fathers did to the false prophets. Friend, the eradication of pride often includes the good. What is the difference between good and life? In the first, we desire accolades, while in the second, these accolades are unnecessary. In the first, we must have the attention, but in the second, it is unnecessary, for we know that God in Christ is glorified, and that's all that matters. God's love is unconditional, meaning that God loves us for the sake of love itself. This is life. One garden, two trees, one seed, two outcomes. One principle of sowing and reaping, two outcomes. One law, two results. All of these come together as one. A garden exists for the planting of seed. Hence, two trees with fruit and seed are seen in its midst. This is sowing and reaping. Since the seed is the word of God, then God's law is the seed. What does the law do? Provokes lawlessness and lawfulness at the same time. One law, two results. For clarification, I will close with the following illustration, which we will examine in the next study.